Hello. Hi, I'm Rosie. Nice to see you all today. Uh, today we're going to do some modern calligraphy, which is very exciting. Um, modern calligraphy has a very um, vague definition. If I talk to you a little bit about calligraphy in general and what we're going to do today, it's very exciting. Anybody can do it. Uh, you don't need many materials. It's a really cheap skill to learn. So I'm going to teach you today how I taught myself. Um, and there's loads of stuff you can do with it. So um, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to learn modern calligraphy. So calligraphy in its traditional sense means beautiful writing. But traditional calligraphy is quite regimented. It's got lots of rules um, that you have to stick to. That I'm not very good at because I'm left handed, which means I can't use the nibs. Uh, whereas modern calligraphy is a little bit more free, it's a little bit more informal, and generally speaking, it's a decorative art form. So what that means is um, we use it for decorative purposes. We make it for looking nice, for looking beautiful. So you can use it for all sorts of things. And today I'm going to teach you some, I know this, is it backwards? Oh, it's not backwards. Wonderful. So we can do some pretty quotes like this. If you get really good, we can start looking at this sort of thing, like signs. Um, we might even have a chance to look at how you might use paint. I don't know if you can see that because of the glare, but I've got some metallic paint on the back there. Lovely. And if you really want to, if you want to go up to um, some really exciting stuff, which is sort of thing I do, you can do massive signs like this. So I sometimes work on weddings, which is where you write on big signs like this. So it's a really exciting art form, but it's also really easy to learn. Um, and today we're going to go through our alphabet and I'm going to teach you how to join up and then how to put all those things together really nicely. Um, all you need now, this was mentioned in the brief, but you don't need one today is a brush pen. So a brush pen is a pen that mimics a paintbrush and the nib. On this one is quite small, so I'm just going to show you one of these ones. Most brush pens look a little bit like this. So as you can see, if I put it in front of my face, my very glary face, it looks like a paintbrush. In fact, I can show you here because I've got some paintbrushes to show you. But I didn't take it out of the bag, which was silly. OK, so you can see they're quite similar to paintbrushes. And the reason we use these for calligraphy is that when you press hard, it will make a thick line. And when you use less pressure, it makes a thin line. Um, and that's the whole point of calligraphy because in the olden days they used quills um, and that's where you get that lovely thick and thin line, which you can probably see on here. So it goes thick into thin, thick into thin, thick into thin. And that's what we're gonna learn today. This brush pen that I'm holding here has a much smaller nib and it's a much stiffer nib. So I like to use these because it makes it much easier to practice uh, the pressure. Uh, these pens are a brand called Tombow, as you can see here. And the name is here, Fudenosuk. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But just by chance, I found one of these pens online. I gave it a go and then it completely changed my life because I realised it's much easier to learn with one of these than it is to learn with one of these. So these are about... £2.50, £3 on the internet um, and you can get them in different colours, you can get big packs of them but they've completely changed my life and I teach lots of calligraphy all of the time and I always use these pens, I don't use any other pens, they're the best. So I can always um, let you know afterwards again what pen this is, I could give you some links. Uh, if you don't have a brush pen today and you're just, you've just got some normal pens, don't worry, I'm going to teach you how to make your beautiful thick and thin lines with a normal pen. Um, there is a whole side category of calligraphy called faux calligraphy, F-A-U-X. And if you type that into Google or Pinterest, you will find that uh, the calligraphy style is the same. It's just that we've added the thick bit in after writing the words, which is really exciting. So I'm going to show you a few different options. Um, Show of hands, not literally, uh, who's got a brush pen with them today? Or have most people just got pencils or normal pens? And then I can factor that in. But I will show you with both anyway, because it's really lovely to watch. 
what have we got? What have we got? Oh, name again. Okay, the name, I'll just go through the name of the pen again, is Tombow is the brand. So you'll find lots of different Tombow pens out there. But this particular one is a Fudenosuk. That's the name of the pen. If you buy a Fudenosuk pen, then it will have this lovely brush nib, which is quite small and stiff and really good to practice with. Wonderful. We've got some calligraphy pens and Tombows. That's really exciting. Yay. Fantastic. OK, so we're going to crack on. We're going to do our uppercase letters. Then we're going to do our lowercase letters. And then I'm going to teach you some cheats on how to join up. The thing with joining up is that um, I want you to forget everything you learned at school, which is really hard to do because we're so used to um, writing like we were taught when we were four or five. It's really stuck in our brains. And I'm going to ask you to do the complete opposite of that because I don't want us to write in any lines. I don't want any of the letters to be the same shape. I will explain that all to you when we get to joining up. Um, you're going to get really frustrated with me, which is wonderful because I'm in this room and you are not. So you can't shout at me. But by the end of it, hopefully you'll really love my cheats on how to make each letter and each word look beautiful, really pleasing on the eye. Um, the placement in the middle of a great big board or piece of paper, tiny little greetings card. It'll just be much more exciting than us writing in lines like we did at school. So. I'm now going to change from this screen to a screen where you're just going to see a lovely white bit of paper so that you can see what I'm writing. So let me just sort my um, talking out. I've got to mute some stuff and un. So hopefully you can see a lovely white piece of paper. And I'm going to sort of scoot around. There's my hand. Here I am, my lefty, lefty, lefty hand. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through each letter. So what I'd like you to do is to get your pen and copy what I do. So just for a little bit of background, I've been doing this for about four, no, five years now. And I started out as a wedding sign writer. And the way I taught myself the alphabet, the calligraphy alphabet, was just by copying other people. So I went on to Pinterest and I got an alphabet that I liked and I just practiced it for about a year until I felt comfortable with it. So this is where I'm going to teach you the same thing. You're going to copy my alphabet and hopefully afterwards you'll do lots of homework um, and you'll practice my alphabet over and over and over and over again for ages and ages until you feel comfortable with it and then you'll be able to add your own flourishes to make your own style which is where I'm sort of at now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start writing the letters and I want you to copy what I do. Uh, I will also go through a, diff a few different variations and explain to you faux calligraphy along the way which is where we don't use a brush pen. So you might see me chopping and changing between brush pen, normal pen and pencil. So we're going to start with our capital A and this is where we need to get used to our pen. So the harder you press, the thicker the line, the less you press, the thinner the line. The difficulty is the pressure and going from thick to thin or thin to thick without your hand shaking. Um, and those motions between the thick and thin is the hardest bit to master. So we start with uppercase because they're slightly simple because they don't join to each other, uh, which is why we're going to start with our capital A now. I'm going to just go ahead and try it, see what you all think. So let me make sure I can see where I'm going. OK, so I'm going to do a little round bit here. I'm going to go up and I'm going to go down thick. And then I'm going to cross it with a nice thin line. And I'm going to keep doing this while you're having a practice. So I'm going to go round and up thin, down thick and then along like this. So this is how we're going to go along and I might variate as we go with different pens and pencils. And I might also show you how you might write the letter differently if you're struggling with certain things. So I'm going to go up thin, down thick and then across nice and thin. So this is you getting used to the pen and the thin and the thickness of it. If you find that you're struggling with the shakes, then make sure your whole arm is on the table or whatever surface you're using because what we find writing these days is there's absolutely no consequence to it because we use computers and we don't often have to write anything for anyone 
it's usually just a shopping list or whatever. There's not really any consequence to handwriting anymore. So we do it quite flippantly. So try putting your arm on the table. If you're right-handed, you will never have the problem of having to move your paper around like as lefties because we're smudging things all the time. So we're quite used to having to move the paper around at different angles. So you can move your paper around however you wish. Your paper isn't stuck to the surface. Your arm isn't stuck to the surface. So because this is an art form, don't forget you can experiment. So the way you hold yourself might change slightly to what you're used to. How are you all finding these capital A's? Sorry, I keep bashing into my camera, so sorry if it's a little bit shaky. I'm sort of sitting over it. Now, I'm just showing you the letters that I do and what I would like you to do over time, hopefully if you carry on doing this over time, is that you might do things slightly differently and that's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. That's you harnessing your own style. So what you might notice is that, for example, you might find that you like to go straight up and down at a slight bigger angle. You might cross your A slightly lower down. There's all sorts of variations. You might curve the top of your A. You might curve the line across. And that's absolutely fine. The, the point is that you write the letters like I do. You copy, copy, copy. You understand the motion of the thick and thin lines. And then you go, ah, oh, my A is slightly different, but I quite like this bit. I like, I like that I've curved this bit and Rosie hasn't. And you'll remember that, and then that's how you'll carry on doing your A's, and that's why there's so many different styles of calligraphy. Um, oh, I'm so glad that your A's already look better, Abby. That's wonderful. That's what we like to see. So straight away, we're already thinking about letters as decoration um, rather than letters, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm just going to do a few more of these A's, going up thin and down thick. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show for people who don't have brush pens, I'm going to show you how you can um, basically mimic this. So you might even go round, sorry for the shaky, go round a few times and make a nice swirl if you want to be really fancy. That's quite nice. Oh, I like that one. Um, what else could you do? You might go up thin, down thick and do a cross like that. So there's so many different ways you can do each letter and it's just about experimenting that. And this pen is the perfect way to do it because your thick and thin lines are very much of the calligraphy style, but it feels like you're holding a normal pen, which is quite nice. So for those of you who don't have a brush pen, I'm very quickly just going to switch over to this. I've just got one of these like school handwriting pens. I just like the feel of them, but it could be any pen. It could be a biro if you want it to, wanted it to be. So faux, faux, uh, faux calligraphy, sorry, is all about adding that thick line in afterwards. And there's a few different ways you can do it. So if I mimic my A like this, still pretty, but if we wanted to add the thick bit in, you'd literally draw your line like this. You can leave the line if you want to, so that it's obviously faux calligraphy. Some people do. Or you can just colour it in. Simple as that. So the difference between using a brush pen and not, use, not a brush pen is just a bit of extra work, really, because you're just adding that thick bit, thick bit in afterwards. But it does give you time to think about the placement of the thick bit, which is quite nice if you're not used to it. So I'm going to move on to our next letter now and so I've been through it a few times so this time I'm going to speed up slightly so I'm going to go through all of the letters uh, and we'll look at variations as we go but I maybe won't do quite so many because there's a lot of A's there oh they look lovely don't they um, I hope you're all getting on all right I'm so glad lots of you have got um, brush pens that's really exciting in fact I'll just show you very quickly um, this is the smaller nib with the Tombow if I was to teach you with a normal brush pen, what I say I say normal in adverse commas, there's lots of different types, but a lot of them look a bit like this. And as you can see, the nib's so much bigger. So the problem with learning with one of these is because the nib is bigger, you have to, it's harder to, um, it's harder to steady your hand. It's harder to get it nice and concentrated and detailed and neat. So what tends to happen is you end up doing a much bigger letter. So if I try and do a thick, thin line with this, it's already much thicker and it's already much bigger. And as you can see, the thick and thin lines aren't as obvious. So that's why I'm a massive fan of these guys. 
I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I would love to be, but you know, I'm just letting you know that this is just my favorite because it's much smaller and easier to um, stay steady. Okay, right, we're gonna move on to some different letters now. So when we get to capital B, it gets interesting. So we're gonna go down thick. We're gonna do a nice straight line, thick line like this. Now, I'm, I know I'm taking my pen off the paper, but that's because I'm, you know, chatting away. Uh, but what we're going to try and practice is to do those letters without moving our hands off of the paper, um, just so we get used to it. So we're going down thick. And then what I tend to do is come back up on myself and go thin and thin. Now, what you'll see is that this capital B looks a little bit like half a butterfly. And that's just because the motion of the pen that I'm going in, the way that I tend to do it. If you don't like this, that's fine. And this is where you would change your style and you might start from the top here. You might go to the middle like this and then all the way to the bottom. You may even decide to make your circular bits different sizes. So there we've got little, big, big, little. You could add a little flourish at the side here if you wanted, if you're feeling fancy. And you can see I've sort of curved this thick line slightly. So it's all about angles. And as you can see, there's loads of different variations of bees there. You can choose how you do it. I'm gonna do a few more for you. I hope you're all practicing with me. So we're going down thick and we're going round and round. So it's all about, this is where it gets difficult, is practicing the thick lines and then doing your thin lines really neatly without shaking. And it's tough. So I do a lot of calligraphy courses that last sort of four weeks and you're only just getting it by the end. So if you're still shaky, your thick and thin lines aren't very obvious by the end of this hour, that's fine. I'll just remind you that it took me a whole year to be able to write a lowercase e without looking at someone else's alphabet. So this is the sort of skill where, yeah, it's really cheap, really easy. You don't need many materials, but what you do need is a lot of time and a lot of patience if you want to get good at it. So I just really like teaching it because I think it's a skill that anybody can master. I think anybody can learn modern calligraphy because there are no rules. We're just writing beautiful letters, but you've got to go away and do the work. But I really like that about it because what that means is you will come out the other end having totally different styles. And you might change your style based on what you're writing. So if you were doing a wedding board, you might be quite floaty and flourishy. You might go for something like this if you were doing a wedding. But then you might do something like this if you were doing like a, I don't know, like a quote for like a nursery or something where you want it to be a bit more simple and uh, childlike, I guess. So there's your capital Bs. I'm gonna, I've realized I'm completely ranting, aren't I? So let's go on to our next letter. So for the C, capital C, really easy. We're just gonna go round like this. The hard bit is going from thin to thick and then back into thin again. Now, again, we're talking about angles. I naturally do a very small thin bit here and then go all the way around and into thin again. It's tough to um, master this, but what you could do if you're struggling is explore the angle in which you do it. So you might find that your C's are better straight down and straight up. And you can see it's totally different there. You might find that just a circular C is better for you. So you can see here the thin bits are much longer this top one is much longer than I've done here, but then the bottom bit is more circular, whereas mine's more angled up. So it's all these things that you can sort of practice as you go along. Just go, I might try it like this, or I might try it like this. I might do a little leg at the end, which is a whole new style. Try very quickly while you're practicing your capital C's for those without brush pens. If I just do a C for you, I'll do a B as well because I didn't do a B before. So you've got your B and that's really simple because you just add in your thick bit there and your C. You just colour that in there like that. Or if you so wish, you could leave, leave it like that. 
which is quite nice. Okay, I'm going to move on to the D, otherwise we're going to be here for hours and hours and hours and hours, which is not a problem for me, but, you know, we're all going to need lunch, aren't we? So, I'm going to go, oh, a double-ended pen, that's exciting. Yeah, I've seen some of those, you get different thicknesses, that's, that's quite, thank you for bringing a double-ended pen up, Mary, because that's really um really useful to know because if you buy double-ended pens then you're getting like two different um thicknesses which is useful for different sized things you can use your thin um thinner nib for the tricky bits and then you can add thick bits in later there is so much out there there are so many different pens um so many different types of brush pen uh that's why i bang on about this one because you can get quite lost in all the different types of pen and you don't know where to go and what to do this is a really good starting point but there's so many things out there and if like me you're a massive stationary fan then the possibilities are endless okay i'm going to move on to a capital d so capital d is very similar to a b because we're just going to go down thick and then go around thin so there are a few ways of doing this very similar to the b we can go down thick we can keep our pen on the paper and then work our way back up I've lost a bit there because I was trying to do it so thin. There we go. So you can see there, I've sort of made the loop start at the bottom and end at the bottom. I'll do that again for you. You might not want to do it like that. You might want to go down thick and then work your way from the top all the way to the bottom, depending on how you feel, how the pen feels. Do, 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 all the way around. You might even want to add in a little flourish at the end which we'll find with the lowercase because they join to each other like this that's quite pretty so it's all about like where the pen's going and what i tend to find is we'll find this with lowercase when it on joining up when it starts to get a bit more tricky um that it's finding a nice uh medium between going quickly and going slowly if you go very very quickly you tend to have more confidence Wow, look at me go. Wonderful. But the problem with going very quickly is that you don't give your brain time to think about where the pen is going. So if you do it very, very slowly, you can think about where the pen is going. However, when you go much slower, you lose confidence in yourself because you're not used to it. So you go, oh, no. And you can sometimes get a bit shaky. So what we're doing today, whilst we practice the letters, is we're also practicing that lovely middle ground between fast and slow. Uh, confident and considered um, and when you find the perfect middle point that's when you will have mastered it and that's when it will become a really nice mindful hobby that you can do while you're watching the tv without getting too stressed and you can practice whilst having a cup of tea or well, that was a nice one so that one I just did that by chance so that one we went down thick we came round, and then I went over the thick bit and round like that that was quite nice I enjoyed that so I'm going to do that again and then I'm going to start going through the other letters. OK, so we've done our capital D. We're going to go on to E now. I'm going to get, in fact, I'm going to write on this card that's already here because that's nice. OK, so there's a few ways you can do a capital E. You can do your normal straight down and then your thin lines. And again, it's thinking about where we want those things to go. So we could go uh, thin. We could do thin down here then down here. Or we could do the opposite of that. We could go like this. And you can see they're totally different. The other thing you can do, sometimes some people do the opposite three, which I do like to teach people because it's a bit of a curveball, but I don't tend to do it very often because it looks a bit weird, but some people do it. So that's like a mirrored three is sometimes used as a capital E. So E's are easy, easy, easy peasy. And you are taking the pen off the paper as you do it. So I'm going to move straight on to the next letter. So F, I had to think about that then. What letter was next? Capital F is super simple, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. So you can do this a few ways. You can do your thick line first and then do your thin lines. Or you could go boop, boop, boop. The other thing you could consider is curving your thin lines. Which is quite nice. Now, you can see here, I might be able to see that you're sort of losing a bit of the ink here, like it's getting a bit scratchy. This is totally normal with these pens, especially if you're using like printing paper. So your normal everyday white printer paper, 
um, which is what I tend to do this sort of thing on just to show people. It's very porous because it um because it wants the ink to go in when you're printing stuff. So you'll find your pen might get a bit scratchy if you're doing it over and over again and using it lots like we are this morning. So that's totally normal, it's fine. It's just like the age old thing where you need to just let it sit down for a bit, nib down, lid on, um, give, it, give it a bit of space, bless it. Um, it's not broken. You can really press very, very hard with these pens and it's not going to split, I promise you. One of the things I do in my classes is get people to press as hard as they possibly can to get their thickest line to see what happens. And it's always fine. So don't worry if it gets a bit scratchy. It might just be the paper that you're using. If you are interested in calligraphy in the future, then I would always recommend using either a notebook or paper that is silk coated. Most notebooks these days are. I think it's the cheapest way of printing paper if it's silk coated. Um, but printing paper obviously isn't. Printing paper is very porous and it sucks up the ink. OK, I'm going to go on to the G's now. G's are very fancy. We like G's a lot. So capital G goes like this. So we're going to start thin. We're going to go down thick. And then we're going to go around like this. So this bit is really fun. And it's really nice to practice, but again, the difficulty is going from thin to thick, thin, thick, and round. Every single one of those has looked ever so slightly different, which is exciting. So I'm going to do this a few more times. There's lots of different ways of doing capital G's, but this is my favourite. I think it looks really pretty. I keep bashing into the camera, sorry. Shaky, shaky. I'll do a few more of those for you. And again, like I say, don't worry too much if you're not getting it straight away. This is a skill that takes a long time to master. So I'm going to go from the G's to the H's. I'm really trying to speed up now so we can get through lots of stuff. So I'm going to go down thick. And then this one you can be a bit fancy with. So you can kind of go, we can do the cross bit first. So we could go like this, which is quite fun. So we're going down thick, then we're going across thin and we're doing a loop. I'm going to try and do that super slowly, see if it helps. I'm creating quite a shadow. I might turn the light on in a moment. I think because it started raining out here, it's just gone very dark. I was relying on natural light because then I'm not creating any shadows with um, the big light in my room. So I'm going to go across thin, up, down thick. But alternatively, you could just do a thick line, a thin line, and then go across however you wish. This is the other problem with being left-handed, is when you're trying to film yourself writing, is that it's really hard for people to be able to see. I'm really trying to keep my hand over the left hand side. And I'm going to do one of those fancy ones one more time for you. So we're going to go down th thick. We're going across, up, down and flick. Down thick. And then I'm going to do that a bit quicker. There you go. Also, you can rewatch this. This was recorded live, but the video is available at any point for you to watch. So you can watch this as many times as you want. You can watch this every single day for the next few weeks and practice, 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 and then come back to me with all your beautiful wedding signs ready for the summer. Okay, so capital H, I, really simple. I'm gonna spend a few seconds on this. Boop, down thick, and then you can do your little crossed bits if you so wish. You could do curvy ones, or you could just do none at all. You could do really long ones, totally up to you but I'm not going to spend too much time on the eyes. J's are really lovely, a little bit like the G's. So you watch what I'm doing. We're going to go up thin like this, which is a bit of a weird shape, and then go all the way around thick and then into thin. That motion is really tough to get hold of. So we're doing a little curve, and then we're going down thick and then into thin and looping over. So it's going from, I'm going to say when, so it's like, this bit here is really tricky, but really lovely to do when you get the hang of it. So 
round thick and then thin like that. Beautiful. You could alternatively just do this bit first and then if you so wish you could cross it like that, which is quite nice. Do a few more of those for you. Lovely. Okay, I'm going to move on to the K now. Um, and I'll do a few variations on this one just to remind people if you want to add your thick bits in. But if you are you're just using a pencil or a normal pen, then just follow with me. Do exactly what I'm doing, but you just don't need to add the pressure in to get the thick and thin lines. Uh, but you can still make the letters look like this and you can still follow the motion that I'm using. So K's can be quite fun. So we're going to go a little floaty bit here and then we're going to go down thick and I'm going to do a loop. Woof! That's beautiful. And then we're going to do our little kicky bits here. So I'm going to go, they're going to be thin. So we're going to go down from here and down from here. So I'm going to do that again. That one's quite floaty. So we're going to go up thin. We're going to go down around thick and a little loop. And then we're going to add these thin bits in. Kick, kick. I'm going to change my paper in a minute so you can see what I'm doing and then down and down. If you don't want to have this little loopy bit here, then that's absolutely fine. So or the, all these bits here, you could simply do, you could maybe do it like this, go down straight, and then you could go kick, kick, like that. That's quite a simple version. You could do your kick, your second kick from here, like this, if you so wished. It's quite nice. I don't know why I keep whistling, like I've got sheepdogs or something. There we go. But this is my favourite way of doing it. I quite like curving le lines that are usually straight. Went off kilt there, there we go. So, very quickly, if you were doing faux calligraphy, before I change paper, you might go down like this, down like this. This is pen running out, feels quite light. And then you could add your thick bit in here. And you could also add your thick bit in and leave it like that. Okay, just bear with me while I get a new piece of paper. There we go, move that bit out of the way. So we're on to L's now. Mm, my goodness, right, I'm going to start speeding up now, everybody. So L's, L's are really fun. Watch this. I'm not going to say anything, I'm just going to do it. Mmm, beautiful. So we're going up thin, looping around to thick, looping the other way to thin. Ooh, once you've mastered it, it's beautiful to do. So we're going up thin, round to thick, looping the other way to thin. And you can make these loops as big or as little as you wish. I'll do a few more of those. I'm going to just, go, just crack on with all the letters now so that we've got time to go into lowercase. And then I can show you my joining up cheeks. Okay, there's your L's. So now we're going to go on to M's. So M's, we do a little flourish here, thin. We go down thick, and then we're going to go round and round in a flick. So I do that again. I sometimes curve my thick line first of all, so it's like an open bracket. And I'm going up thin, down thick up thin, down thick and flick. What I tend to do as well, now this doesn't usually apply to capital letters but I'll tell you anyway, is I tend to make this second loop stop earlier. And the reason for that is my second letter will then sit in the middle of it rather than at the bottom because we're going to do the opposite of writing in lines. That will become clearer later on. So I'll just do a few more of these for you. I hope you're all enjoying your brush pens and getting used to the steadiness of the hand between the thick and thin lines. What tends to happen is half of you will be really good at 
these loop, loopy sort of circular motions and the other half of you will be much better at the straighter lines so like the F's and the E's and the I's and it just depends how you hold your pen you might want to consider holding your pen slightly differently so holding it at more of a horizontal angle to the paper rather than upright um, but you can explore all of this when you're practicing your letters okay I'm going to go on to N now so we're going to go uh, up thick, down thin, and up thick again. That wasn't that thick though, was it? Let's try that again. So I'm going to go loop, thick, down thin, and then up thick again. Now you might have noticed when I was doing that, that I sort of like almost changed the position of my pen as I was doing it. So that's another thing that we don't really do anymore when we're writing, is we're just writing furiously really quickly so we can get out the door and do our shopping. Um, whereas this is an art form, so you can really consider how you're holding your pen as you go along. So I sort of went up thick like this, and then I kind of, without realising, sort of angled my pen slightly for, um, pointing down towards the paper so that I could do this thin line nicely. And then I went up thickly like this. So you might consider that as you're going along, changing the angle of the, that you're holding the pen. So I'm just doing some simple ones now really quick for you to see and then another sort of fancy one there. okay now I'm going to go on to O O is really lovely again it's one of those where you have to go from your thick to, thick to thin line in one motion so this is a good one to practice but I'm also going to add a little flick just so that it looks a bit nicer so it's a bit less boring also it gives your brain Time to manage the thin line because it's going, it's doing a little flick at the end as well. So your sort of hand naturally keeps going, which is quite nice. And again, as I was saying before about the way you, in which you write letters, you might find it much easier to do a very oval O, or you might find it easier to do a more circular O. All three are different. But all three are still in the callig calligraphy style and all three are beautiful so you can experiment the angle in which you do things but hopefully you'll get to a point where you can do this quickly and neatly that looks lovely okay now i'm going to go on to p capital p really simple so i'll move this along so we're going to go down thick and i tend to work from the bottom so i keep my pen on the paper and then go up thin and round and you can do a little flick if you would like and again we might change the placement of this letter if we so wish so you might go down thick take your pen off the paper and work your way around like that doesn't really matter however you fancy there's loads of different ways of doing it but I like to do it like this because you can do it in one continuous motion okay now I'm going to do some cues. I'm really battling on through these capitals now. Uh, okay, cues are really simple because it's an O without the flick because the flick goes down here. So that lovely thick to thin line and then a little motion there. Really lovely. Okay, I'm not going to do many of those. So now we're on to Riz. R's, R's for Rosie. I like doing these because it's the start of my name. So I'm going to go down thick. I'm going to keep my pen here. I'm going to go up thin, round and flick. So again, we don't have to do it that way round. We could go down thick. We could start here and work our way around like that. Or we could go down thick and just do a simple doop, doop, doop. But I think this one, this one looks nice, right? So down thick. So I'll just remind anyone who's just joined, if you want to learn this, you can re-watch it at any point. And you don't have to have a brush pen to do it. If you want to buy a brush pen and then come back and watch this another time, then that's great. But if you fancy having a go and all you've got is like a biro or a pencil, that's absolutely no problem because all we would do is we would add our thick bits in. So you can go through all the letters with me at exactly the same pace. You can write them as I, as I write them out. But the difference is you don't have to do your thick and thin lines. You can just copy me 
and then you can add your thick line in like this do, 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 and give the impression of calligraphy which is why it's called faux calligraphy and it's not cheating because it's still an art form it still looks lovely okay now i'm going to go on to the s's so s's i tend to do a little circular bit here i kind of couldn't speak then i was like i'm just going to do it and just show you so do a floaty bit there i don't know what to call it floaty bit and then we're going to go round thick and then back into the thin and over again so it's kind of like a very very swirly snake but you don't have to do those bits you could just do these bits you could just go around at the bottom if you so wished again i'm going to change my paper in a minute because i'm now i'm at a point now i'm near the bottom my camera is in the way of my hand so i can't see what i'm doing so if you think this is impressive then yeah it is pretty impressive because i'm doing it without looking i'm doing it basically blindfolded wow i'm a master look at this can't even see nice so we've gone from thick to thin there with a slopey bit here but you could do it oh yeah really can't see now hang on so i'm going to do a loop here and then round. i know you couldn't really see that there we go let's move paper so that i can actually see what i'm doing quite proud of myself though for doing a few of those s's without seeing that's quite clever okay gonna power through these ones so t you can be really simple with a t you can go across thin and down thick see i've got a bit of a scratchy bit there with the pen or alternatively you can be really fancy now this is a challenge because what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a bit of a loopy bit so that the pen doesn't have to come off the paper so i'm going to go across thin and round back on myself and then down but it was all in one go now i know it looks a little bit like a j and with these alphabets, some letters do look a bit odd and not like a, and look a bit like other letters. But that's OK, because in the context of the words, they will still make sense. So whoop. when I teach people this tea, most people complain about it, which is why I mentioned it looking normal in the context of letters and words. And everyone's like, this isn't a T, it's a J. Well, if you search calligraphy alphabets online you'll find a lot of t's that look like this it's simply because it's a way of writing a t without stopping and you'll find a lot of traditional calligraphy is all about that it's kind of like keeping your pen on the paper because you would have a nib i guess it's so if you had a nib that you were dipping in ink you want as less as little mess as possible so you want to try and do it all in one go so that's kind of the the style you're going for okay little t's Easy, easy, easy. Okay, now we're going to go on to the U. Really simple, down thick, up thin, down thick again. And you can do a little flick if you want to. I'll do a few of those really quickly. This is where we always get, I always get a bit impatient towards the end of the alphabet because I'm like, come on now, let's get on to the fun stuff. Lowercase is much more fun. Okay, and the Vs, down thick. on the other way round, don't I? Here we are, here she is. I'm just going to clip, clip my camera in place so I'm not too wobbly and hopefully nothing will happen again. 
I did that on purpose so you had a min moment's breather because I was working you so hard. Right, there we go. We're back in. So luckily, I'd cut out on a really boring letter. I mean, let's face it, these Vs, look at them. So boring compared to all the other beautiful lettering we've done. So before we, sorry about that, just before we cut out, I wanted to mention to you that often some people will tend to write in an italic way when they start to learn this sort of writing. Their hands will naturally sort of write things at an angle. And that's absolutely fine. Um, if you like the italic, then that's great. If you don't, then what I would recommend is moving your paper around, seeing what happens. Um, my hands, I think, are naturally going slightly italic today because I'm kind of leaning over a camera and I think that's kind of what's what's going on. But it's just something I thought I'd mention because I noticed that mine were at a slight angle. It's absolutely fine if they are, but if you don't want it to be at an angle, then start moving that paper around, see what happens. Okay, so we're going to go on to the W very quickly. Do, do, do. So now that you've got the hang of this, now that you've been practicing, when we go into the lower case, because I'm just conscious of time and I don't want to keep you off too long, and I would really love, you, love to teach you the joining up tricks. I'm going to just start writing the letters and I'm not going to explain them too much. We're just going to go ahead and do them. And we're going to go through them super quickly. So there's your W's. And then we're going to do some X. X's are super boring. I don't have a lot to say about X's at all. You can go down thick like that if you want. But I mean, there's not much you can do with them. If you look at like calligraphy X's, there's... Ve there's very little you can do with them, but you could go down thick and then you could do a thin flick like that, or you could do down thin, down thick this way. I'm not going to say much else. Y's are really fun, so you can go crazy with these ones. We can go round like this and across. So we're going to do the little flicky bit like this. We're going to go down thick, up thin, and then round. And you can be as extravagant as you want with this loopy bit. That's exciting. See where your hand takes you. There we go. Du, du, du. That went a bit that went a bit funny. It's because I'm getting to the point where I can't see my own hand again. <laughs> and then Z, let me do Z very quickly down here. Again, quite quite boring. We're going to go across thin down thick and across thin. You can do it in one motion if you want. They're quite nice to do actually, but there's not a whole lot we can do with them in terms of like flourishes really. You can curve that, that's quite nice. Curve this bit here, that's all right. Okay, so we've mastered our upper case. I'm gonna move on very quickly to our lower cases. Lower cases are much more fun. They're designed to join up. And I'm going to really whoosh through these as quick as I can because I spent way too long on capital letters. It's what I always do. I, get, I always get too into it. So, right, I'm going to just get a pile of paper here so that we can just crack through it. And then I'm going to so, show you how to join them up. So the joining up cheats, I think, are the most important thing. So if you can stay for that, that's amazing. If not, you can always rewatch later. So... I'm just going to start doing them. I will still I will still talk through some, but I'll maybe do less ranting because maybe the ranting um, makes me do it less quick. <laughs> OK, so lowercase a. If you stick with me, I'm just going to power through them. I might talk as I'm going, but I'm going to keep going through them. So the reason that the lowercase ones are a little bit more fiddly is because they are designed to join to each other. So what I want you to really consider when you're doing this is spreading out these flicks at the end because essentially there will be another letter going here and we don't want it to be too squidged to the letter in front of it. So I'm just going to do a line of each one, each letter, so that you can copy me. And you can see I'm going thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin, thick, thin. Now the B's are a little bit more tricky because we're going to do a loop so that it can be joined to something in front of it. So we're going to go round, down thick, around, 
and another flick. Whew! I'll do that again. So we're going to go up thin, round, down thick, and around like that. And that's so that you can have a letter here and a letter here. So I'm going to do a few more of those. Hopefully you can come along with me. Keep whistling. <laughs> I'm going to try and stop doing that. So we're going to go up thin, down thick, and round, and another flick. So your pen's really taking a battering now. It's probably going to start getting a bit scratchy, but that's okay. It's not broken. She, they just need a rest after a while. Just like we will, after all this beautiful writing. Bob. Okay, now I'm going to go on to the C's. The C's are very similar to the capitals, so I won't do too many of these, because you've already done this. You know what you're doing here. You know that you can change the angle, you could go more oval, you can do more circular. But you've done this already, so I'm not going to do any more of those. Capital D, we're going to go, uh, sorry, lowercase d. We're going to go around like this, and then similar to the B, there'll be a nice little flick here. So we do the circular motion, then we go up, loop round, thick, and thin. Let's so go around thick, up thin, down thick, and up. Again, if you don't have a brush pen, that's fine. Just ignore my thick and thin bits. You're just going to follow the motion which I'm doing to write each letter. Mm -hmm. That was a nice one. The other thing that you can do, I'm going to keep going, so you keep going too, just try and listen while you're doing it, is that when you have finished this, when you've written all of your, you've done all of your letters like I have, what's really nice to do is to go back through all the letters and circle the one of each letter you like the most. So you might go along the A and say, oh, I really like this one. And you might say, ah, this was the nicest B. And the reason for that is that when you go ahead and practice um, after today and you're doing your letters over and over again, mastering your skill, is that you'll know which one you liked the best when you did it first time around and you can copy that one over and over again so you know that you're doing the best one every time. Okay, lowercase e, this is where I really struggled. I really struggled with this for such a long time, doing this thin bit and round into the thick. I really, it took me over a year to get this. So don't worry if you're struggling, but what, I set, what seems to have happened with me is I can do them now, but on a lot of my things now, I tend to straighten it and find that much easier. So there's nothing wrong with doing that if you find that easier, doing a straight line and then round, straight line thin, round thick. You might find it easier to do it the first way, which was a sort of slow loop that goes from thin to thick in one go. And this little line here is so that we can join it it will be joined to something in front of it. Okay, now I am going to have to spend a bit of time on lowercase f because they are absolutely crazy. They are very hard to master. So watch very carefully and then good luck. So we're going to go up thin, down thick, round thin and loop. Whoo, what? What madness. Okay, do it again. Up thin, down thick, round thin and loop. Imagine the thick line is like an open bracket and you're putting little wings on it almost. This one always um, gets people. So I'm going to do a few of these for you. Good luck writing these. Seems to be a little, sorry my camera's ever so slightly blurry. It's kind of not a, let me see if I wipe this, see if it, that's slightly better, oh, there we go, that's better. It's having trouble focusing because I, I think this tends to happen with things where your, your camera's pointing at your hand writing because you're moving your hand, your, it's kind of um, tries to focus on your hand, then it focuses on the paper, then it focuses on your hand again, and it doesn't know what it's doing. Okay. There's your Fs. Yeah, uh, the lowercase ones are much easier than the lowercase. That's why we start with uppercase. <laughs> Break you in nice and nice and easily. Yeah, lowercase are much harder. 
um, they're floatier, they're they're loopier, um, and also because they're designed to join to each other, they've got bits on either side. So yes, this is much harder. Um, but the more you practice, the better it will get. And also in the context of words, it will get easier. When you're just writing letters floating in the air, that can be quite tricky on the brain. When we start putting those letters together into words, it will become easier. That's why I'm flying through this as quickly as I can, so I can teach you my cheats. So we're going to do the Gs now. But also, I think what you'll find is when you get used to writing the lowercase, once, you're, um, once you've mastered these thick and thin lines and the steadiness of hand and the lovely lines and loops and swirls, is that you'll probably prefer, prefer lowercase letters because they're, they have more scope to kind of do more with and make your own style because there's a lot more kind of floaty, loopy lines. But I'm just going through them as quick as I can. Just so you can see how I write them. You can copy that and then just mimic me. There we go. Hopefully your hands are feeling a bit more used to it now. Just move these out of the way. So you're, you're getting to a bit of a rhythm, hopefully. H's are really fun. So we're going to go up thin, down thick, up thin, down thick and flick. And the great thing about this is when we get to putting them in lovely words, we can be really extravagant with these loopy motions. So we can make that really big if we wanted to. We can make it thinner, make this bit longer. There's loads of ways of doing it, whichever suit your style. They're really nice. I really like H's. So go up thin, down thick, up thin, down thick, and flick. Do that a couple more times. Oh, we're powering through this lowercase alphabet. Very pleased. Do one more at the end here, just because they're lovely to do. Very nice. Okay, now we're going to go on to H. Also, what's nice is you can kind of see all the letters ahead. I will have to change paper soon, but you can kind of see these as you're going. So if you rewatch this and you want to practice, you can kind of kind of copy at your own pace then. Uh, I forgot what letters we're on now. I. So you can be really simple with the I, but if you're joining them, you want a nice little flick there and the same this side. Again, that's so you can join your letters either side. And it's making sure these flicky bits are quite wide and sticky outy so that you're giving yourself lots of space. Because this is decorative writing, we want everything to be nice and spread out. It's going to feel a lot, mm, a lot more extravagant than normal writing. And it's going to feel a bit weird to begin with. But then you get used to spreading out. And when I show you my cheats, it will all become clear. That's why we want lots of space. It just looks much nicer. Boop. Really nice. Thin, thick, thin, and a dot. Okay. And then J's are very similar to the capital J's, so I don't need to spend too much time on them. The capital J's, we had our sort of flicky bit here, but for the lowercase, we can just go down thick, loop into thin, and then do a dot. And as you can see, my I start at a slight angle going down this way. So that it gives me loads of space to go around like that. Okay, and then lowercase k. Now, lowercase k, you've got your curly, your kicking cur that you learnt at school. I will show you a few of these, but just to let you know at this point that you don't have to do every letter like this. So that's your that's your fancy lowercase k. You're doing loop and then you're going round and then you do your last your tail bit there. However, I don't like these lowercase k's. They do look a bit like capital R's. They always have, haven't they, really? Let's face it. So I just do a normal capital K um, as a lowercase, like most people do in sort of standard writing nowadays. Uh, because I like it better, I like the look of it better. I don't really like drawing these. So at this point, it's nice to point out that you can use a simple variation for any of the letters that you don't like. It's also applicable to the lowercase r, which we'll get to, r, because uh, it looks a bit weird, doesn't make any sense, as you'll soon see. Um, 
and I'll show you some examples when we start to join up of where you can just add in simple lettering. As long as you've got your thick and thin lines, doesn't really matter. So there's your lowercase k, but you don't have to. You can do your lowercase k like this. No one will know the difference. We tend to do them like that anymore. And now, now, anyway. So what's the next letter? I'm forgetting what the alphabet is. L. Okay, so your lowercase l is quite similar to the uppercase, but we're just missing out one of the loops. So we're just doing this. So we're going up thin, down thick, and a flick. Really nice. The lovely thing about the lowercase l's is you can change the shape of the loop depending on what sort of thing you're writing. If you're doing a double l, it's nice to change them every time you do it. So here's me going straight into two l's. So the loops I might make different sizes, like that. But for now I'll just do a few more of the lower cases. I'm getting towards the bottom of the page now. Just as if I've just realised that I can just watch myself on the camera and then I'm <laughs> not blocking my own view. That's funny. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next piece of paper. So we're going to go on to lowercase m, very similar to the capital. So I don't need to spend too much time on them. Boop. Same as before. Not much difference in lowercase m's. I'm just doing them really quickly so you can see. Nice row of them. Thick thin, thick, thin, thick and flick. And the ends, I mean you can do the ends because it's half of an M. Lovely, down thick, up thin, round and flick. You can see I really elongate those flicks because I know that there's going to be a letter coming next to it. Lovely. Those are exactly the same as the uppercase, it's just that they might be slightly smaller, or maybe not, as the case may be when we come to joining up. We do that in one nice motion, thick, thin, oh, I came off the paper then, thick, thin, and round. Thick, thin, and round. Lovely. Okay, then the P's are, I think, exactly the same as the capitals as well. So we're going down thick, I'm keeping my pen here and working my way up to thin and around a loop. You might want to flick a bit here so that it's joined to another thing in front of it, if you so wish. Like that. So we go down thick, up thin and around. Lovely. Do a couple more of those. Okay, we're doing all right. So cues. You can just do a normal cue like this, if you so wish. That's beautiful in itself. So we're going round thick, up thin, down thick, and then a lovely flick at the end. But if you want to, you can go, now let's see if I can do this, round like this. Ooh, I managed it. See if I can remember how to do that again. Round, round again, and then flick. That's super fancy. You don't have to do it like that if you don't want to, but it is very nice to look at. Round, round again, and flick. I don't know why that's a cue, but it is. It's very nice. Okay, I've got it now. Now I've done it a couple of times, I can do it super quick, and this is where you will be the more you practice. And a couple more of just normal flicks. Cues are quite nice, but they're not in many words, are they? Okay, R's. Okay, so this is again where the simple variation might come in. So R's in calligraphy look like this. Don't shoot the messenger. It was nothing to do with me, but that's what they look like. <laughs> so it's because if you do a normal R like this, it's got nothing to join to here and nothing to join to here. So if you were joining up in one go, this is how you would do it. So you do like a circle and then you go down and up. I have absolutely no idea why, but that's how you do it. But I don't very often use these. I might use these R's if I'm doing something really formal, like a wedding invitation, for example. But for everything else, I will just do this. And 
you don't have to join every single letter to itself, as you will see when we do joining up. The whole point of my joining up cheats is that you're not actually joining up, which is really exciting because it means you don't have to do everything in one go. Um, S is the same as before. So we're going loop, round, thick and loop. Really simple. Very nice. Uh, T's are lovely. I really like doing T's because you can really go crazy with them uh, when it comes to putting them in words. You can make them really massive compared to other letters. So we're going to go down thick, up thin, and then cross. Oh, look at that. You can do a really lovely crossing of the T there. Really nice. Some people like to do it like this. So you can go, uh, if you're having your joining bit, it would come in like this. So you go up thin, then you go down thick, up thin, and then cross. So this is the bit that would be joined. You can do that in one go if you want, like that. I quite like it sometimes when you go up like this, down thick, up thin, and then you sort of like cross the T here, or you can cross the T really high up like this. Really nice. There we go. Lots of lovely T's there. Okay, U's are the same, so I won't do many of those. Not much we can do with U's. We're just going to go down thick, up thin, down thick, and flick. Like this. Down thick, up thin, down thick, and flick. If you wanted to add your joining bit at the beginning, you might do something like this. But again, you don't have to. And then V's, very boring. You might add a little bit there for joining up if you wanted to. And then W's are the same as the uppercase. Down thick, up thin, down thick, up thin. Down thick, up thin, down thick, up thin. And X's, again, super boring. There's nothing, you can't really join an X to anything. You have to do two lines. You have to take your pen off the paper. So just make it as neat as you can, I guess. Y's are the same. Up, th down thick, up thin, and then a big loop round. Not much difference there. You might add your flicky bit in here if you wanted to. Okay, and then the Z's again. You can do this if you want to, which is what we did with the capitals. Or if you want to be a bit mad, you can do the ones that look like threes. Some people do in calligraphy. I don't really like doing them. I quite like this. I like the straightness of the zigzaggy ones. So, okay, we have mastered our uppercase and lowercase lettering. They look absolutely beautiful. And if you want, then this is a good place to continue practicing is just doing your letters like this over and over again until they look like this without you having to looking at, look at mine, look at other ones. It just happens naturally. You can do it with your brush pen, get your thick and thin lines or without a brush pen and add your thick lines in. So there's your alphabet. Wonderful. We've done that. Great. Now this is the bit where your brain's going to hurt even more if it's already hurting. But the point of modern calligraphy is that it is decorative. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you some examples while I'm talking. So when we're writing um, in a modern calligraphy style, it's generally going to be for decorative purposes. It's going to be on show. It's got to look nice. So that is why uh, I'm going to ask you not to write in lines. When we write in lines, what tends to happen is, uh, first of all, it's boring. <laughs> and um, you leave lots of gaps and then the placement of where you put it hasn't got much context. So I'm going to teach you how to do the opposite of this because when we write in lines, it's not going to look very nice. So I'm going to show you a cheat on how to do it. To begin with, I'm going to show you, where's my paper? There it is. Right. I'm going to show you what happens when we write in lines, just so I can drill it in, just how 
boring it is. Okay, so if I was to write happy birthday, um, and so I'm going to go like this, and I'm going to do it in one go. But what I'm doing is I'm writing without paying too much attention to where it's going. I'm just writing the letters as I've just taught you. So you've got a H which sticks up, you've got a P which sticks down, another P which sticks down, sticks down, and a Y that sticks down. And then when I go on to birthday, we've got a line that sticks up, and then an I, I'm gonna do a normal R because I don't like the floating ones. And then look, we've got a T and a H and a D, and they all stick upwards, so they crash into the letters above. If I'd given myself space and gone lower down, that's fine, but you'd have a great big gap here. And you've got a gap here and you've got lines. So I just don't think it looks particularly decorative, if you will. It's quite um, uniform and we want things to be a little bit extra, a little bit pizzazz, um, really pleasing on the eye, makes people want to look at it for longer. So there's a few different things that I've done. There's two cheats. So the first cheat is when we're joining our letters up, is to break in between we're doing certain letters because we need to give our, our brains time to think. So, for example, I'm going to write a H and then I'm going to do my flick and then I'm going to stop. If I was doing it like this, I'd go straight into it like this. And my hand will naturally write in a line because that's what we were taught at school. So this is what I call break points. And we're going to join the letters, but we're just doing it step by step. It just makes it a bit easier. We can take our time. We can think about where we're going. So I'm now going to place my E here. And now I can think about it. I've done my flick. I can place my A here and I can purposely make it slightly smaller so that we're not creating a line. So we can do this letter by letter if we so wish. There might be some that you feel comfortable joining together. So if I try and join the P to the Y, I know I still came off, you see. So if I do birthday, let's think of an example. So we've got a B here and I'm going to stop. So I can think about where this I is going to go. I want to make it smaller than the B and I'm going to stop again. So I can do the R. Now I can do a really big T because I've got time to think about where it's going. So I'm going to do a T and I'm going to go straight into the H. But I've made it purposely bigger. But because I broke in between, it's given my brain time to think about it. So now I can go do the D here and make it smaller than the H. I'm going to stop again. I'm going to make the A slightly smaller, like this. I'm going to stop again. And then I'm going to do the Y like this, I'll go round. So what I've done there is I've given myself time to think about where each letter is going to go and how big it's going to be. And then you're giving yourself the space, the time, and it's already a million times more decorative than this is because you've changed the shape of the letters. You've made sure that you're not writing in a straight line. The only problem I've got here now is there's a few gaps. So now I want to think how I'm going to stick these together um, and make sure there's no extra bits that we don't want to see and also nothing crashing into each other. These two are starting to crash into each other a bit. So the next cheat will completely revolutionise how you join letters up or not join, as the case may be. So what I would like you to do is get a pencil. Hopefully you've all got pencils nearby. Don't worry too much if you haven't. It's just that we'll rub out what we've done with pencil. So you don't have to. You don't have to rub it out at all. So what I want you to do, get your pencil and think of your first name. If you can remember your first name, wonderful. And I would like you to draw a series of circles, one circle for each letter in your first name. The rule is the circles have to stick together and they have to be different sizes. So if you copy what I do, but for your own name, so my name's Rosie, so I'm gonna do a big circle for R and then a little circle, a big circle, a little circle and a big circle. So that's the rule, they need to be touching and it needs to go big, little, big, little, big. So the letters of your name. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fill those circles with our letters. So the only rule here is that you've got to fill the circles. You can use your break points at this point, so you can join each letter separately, so you've got time to think about it. 
So I'm going to show you mine. So if I feel, can you see I'm going from edge to edge? There's my R. I'm going to fill my O like this into the S. I'm going to break here, do my little I, and I'm going to fill this with the E. Beautiful. So what that's done is it's forced me to not write in a line. Because what happens is if you try and do it yourself here by just breaking, your brain will still try to write in a line because we're so used to doing it from school. So by doing this, the only rule that you've given yourself is to fill the circle, which is quite an easy, easy rule to stick to and your brain will allow you to do that. It's, it's amazing how much your brain will persevere with sticking to something it already knows. When you're trying to teach it the opposite, it really doesn't want to know. And this is one of those things. And this is why these circles are great because you're just going, hey, it's fine. All I'm doing is filling a circle. I can totally do that. So if you have a go at that with your first name, you fill each circle. Now, the other thing your brain might do is it might not fully fill the circle. So you've got to really be careful. You really got to try and stick to these edges here because it will ensure that each letter is a different size. And again, the reason for this is because we don't want to write in a line because we'll create gaps for ourselves. We might also crash into it and it just doesn't look as fun. It's just not as exciting. If I wrote that on a great big piece of wood, then it's not going to look as exciting or pleasing on the eye as if, as if I do it like this. So the next thing to take into consideration is our second line. We don't want gaps. We don't want crashing. So this is where the circles come in again, because what we can do now is we can put the circles in between these circles. So we can think about what's coming next. So my second name is Johnson, so I'm going to do that. So what I might do, again, the rule is the circles need to stick to each other and you need to fill the circles and the circles need to be different sizes. So I can think about now, I can kind of manipulate where it's going to make sure that it's filling the gaps. So I'm going to do a great big circle for J and then I'm going to do a little O here and it's still touching so that I can fill this gap with a H because a H that sticks upwards. And then I can do a little N and then I can do a big S and a little O and then a big N at the end. And then if I fill that, you'll see what happens. So I'll do the J into the little O into the big H into the N and the big S getting into the thing where I can't see again. I should just look at my camera and then a big N. So I have filled each circle. We have filled all the gaps. There are no straight lines in sight. And if I rub out the circles, I won't spend too much time on this because, um, but you can do this when you've got time. When you rub out the circles, it will look a load nicer. <laughs> but what, you're, what effect you're going for essentially is um, to have no straight lines and to have a really interesting way of writing your letters. So your two cheats are your break points, which is where you're not actually joining up all in one go, and your circles, which is the way you stop big straight lines from happening. So I'm going to do it on a nice new piece of paper. Okay. So I'll do happy birthday just to prove my point. And then just before I go, I'm going to give you one more task to do, which I won't go through too much, but it's just a really fun thing for you to do when you've got a bit of time. So I just want to talk to you now about the circles and how you can manipulate that technique. So you don't just want to go big, little, big, little, big, little, because what you might find is that certain letters look better big. Um, I always find that vowels look better in small circles. So now I'm going to think about what's in it, what each letter is and how big or little those circles might be. Um, so I'm going to do a big H and a little A. If I'm doing double letters, so happy has got PP, then I will always make those different sizes as well. That's always fun. So we'll do a big one and a little one. So happy works quite nicely in the same way that Rosie worked. So I'm going to fill that space now just to show you. come out of the lines ever so slightly but I'd rather go out of the lines than not go in them enough because then you'll find straight lines start to appear but it also by doing the circles it makes you really exaggerate each letter which is what you want you exaggerate it 10 times 
that's more than you would ever doing. And now we want to fill birthday and we want to fill those gaps. So we're going to really think about where it's going. I'm going to start with a big B there and a little I. But what I would really like to do is fill this gap with the T because it's a nice shape to do. So I'll probably do a small R and then a great big T, uh, B, I, R, T, yep. Yeah. And then I can fill this whole gap here with the H and then do a smaller D an even smaller A and a big Y. So you can see I'm manipulating the circles now. I'm not just going big, big circle, little circle, big circle. I'm thinking about what's going to go in each one and then working around that. But then I'm going to fill those circles and my brain will be able to do that because I'm not giving it too much difference to deal with. You know, it's it will be able to manage it. Now, fill that A there, and then Y. There we go. Now that, if you do that in the middle of a normal greetings card, it's going to look so much more beautiful than if you write it normally. You've got no lines. You can start adding embellishments to it. You could put some stars around it. And basically, the effect you're going for is no straight lines and no letters that are the same size. They're all different sizes. They're all different shapes. And that will look so much better sat in the middle of something than if it was written normally. So that's your circle cheat. You've got your circle cheat, your joining up cheat, which is to break in between. It still looks joined up to me. No one will know. This is the joy of modern calligraphy. There are no rules, right? So I don't care how you got there. Same as faux calligraphy. It's fake calligraphy, but it's still an art form. That's the, that's the key here, is that it doesn't matter how you got there. It doesn't matter if you wrote each letter separately and it took you half an hour to write each letter. At the end of it, if it looks like you've written it in one go, beautifully, in one motion, no one's going to care how it got there. You just want it to look pleasing on the eye and aesthetically lovely. Um, so just before I go, I'm just going to say one more thing. This is a task for all of you if you stuck with me and you want to carry on. Um, but you can always come back to this video, watch it again. Um, I'm just going to give you one more lovely little thing for you to do, which is fun. And it's similar to the circle cheat in that it gives your brain enough um, of, enough rules to stick to, but forgetting about all those straight lines and school schoolwork letters. So essentially, I'm just going to teach you very quickly how to, let me just find the example, uh, writing in a circle. So writing in a circle is very similar to the cheat that I've just given you with the little circles because you can fill the space and when you rub out the circle it will look absolutely glorious. So the only thing I didn't do was actually bring something that's a circle. That's useful, isn't it? So what I'll do is I'll try and trace around this one. Which I should be able to do. Yeah, I can see that. So the great thing about circles is that you can you can either keep them there or you can get rid of them. You can add leaves to them. You can add, you know, lots of pretty things to them. So with circles, it's all about filling the space again. So I've just drawn a circle with pencil. Not a very good one. Sorry about that. Um, but this is another cheat. Um, which I like doing. So if you wanted to write a quote, for example, so I'm just going to say like, uh, you you are my favourite human. So all you would do is you would draw a wave inside the circle to fit the first maybe one or two words, and then you're going to fill the space. So it's exactly the same as the circle cheat, but by this point you'll be so used to writing the letters that you'll be able to do it without drawing lines. So here we go. My pen needs a break, but... So you're just filling the space and you'll see it's making sure that those letters are different sizes because you're filling that wave. And then what you might do is do your next word here and fill that space. Like that. And then you might do another wave here. This could be a big one because it's a bigger word. And then if I just fill this got a very scratchy pen now definitely needs a break pen needs a lunch 
And it's all about, this is a really good task for practice because it gets you good at spacing out letters and filling spaces. You know that you've got this much space to fill with one word. So you've really got to elongate and spread those letters out. And then I'll do human here. And I'm aware that I've got a great big gap here. But what I can do is I can do lots of fancy pictures to fill the space. I could do lots of leaves and flowers. So look, I've got to fill this space to make that work. But that's the only rule you've given your brain. So it kind of will allow you. And that seems crazy, doesn't it? To write an M that big and an A and an N that big. But when you look at it as a whole, it looks really decorative. And then what we can do afterwards is if we so wish, we could add some leaves just to fill the space. But this is just a really easy way of writing a quote on a bit of paper, put it in a cheap frame, perfect present for someone, personalised gift, really easy. So the possibilities of this skill that we've just learnt this morning are absolutely endless. So that's lovely. So I'm just going to recap very quickly. Brush pen is a Tombow. Few Dennis Duke, is that the right way around? Uh, no, it's upside down. It's upside down. Can't see. There we go. So it's the Tombow Few Dennis Duke. That's the brush pen that I've used today. It's a smaller brush pen than usual, so it's stiffer. It's easy to um, do more detail. Faux calligraphy is where we add the thick bits in afterwards if you don't have a brush pen. If you want to watch this back, so I've just bashed the camera there. If you want to watch this back, then there's uppercase, lowercase in the calligraphy style, and then the two cheats, which are um, your break points and your circles to fill your um, fill your letters with to make them different shapes and sizes. So I'm going to go now. I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, I'm just going to put this here for you to see. Look out while I'm saying goodbye. I hope you've enjoyed it. I really hope that you come back and watch it again. You can watch it as many times as you want. Keep trying. And if any any of you need anything anytime, if you ever want to message me on Instagram, I'm at Rosie and Ramona Make. Um, I'm on Facebook, uh, Facebook as well as Rosie and Ramona. Um, and I teach calligraphy very often. Uh, if you're in the Leicestershire area, then I'm always teaching calligraphy. But it's really nice to do a virtual one and be able to speak to lots of people everywhere. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoy your lunch. Hope your brain isn't too frazzled, which it may well be, it usually is. Um, when you learn something like this and I hope you got lots from it but just the main point here is that I'm, you probably weren't wonderful today and that's totally okay because it will take a really long time to master this skill but the joy of it is it's super cheap it's super easy and you will get there because it's just writing and I have taught so many people every single one of them say no I can't do it and they all are absolute pros by the end so please let us know how you got on send us pictures Love to see how you've done um, and hope you enjoyed yourselves. Thank you so much, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>